Honestly, that is the calculation I get every single time. The new Porsche Panamera with its 21 different trims, if you account for all of the options, can be had 800,000 different ways. No, James. 800,000. No, that's absurd. 800,000 different Panameras? It's math. Yeah, okay, well, uh, how much, uh, Tesla Model Y, how many of those could there be? So I plug that in, yeah. and with FSD, 360. 360, and yeah. you're saying that with all the different engines and trims and options, uh, it, there's 800,000 possible Panameras? Yeah. There's no way Porsche would do that, that's stupid. All right, listen, I'm gonna call the smartest person I know. Okay. Jason Fenske, engineering explain. Oh, you have him on your phone, that's a yeah. flex. Okay. Uh, I actually asked him about this last night, so he probably hasn't slept thinking about this. All right. Let's see what he says. J Dog. Yo, J Money. Hey, I'm with Thomas at the moment. You. Oh, you're. On, yeah, I know. You're on speaker, by the way. Ah. Uh. Um. So, uh, so I've been talking about this Panamera thing, and I got eight hundred thousand different Panameras, and Thomas says no. Well, Thomas is right. You're off by a lot. Really? Yeah, I told you. I, told I was. You. Uh, was I too high? No, quite the opposite. What do you mean? So, what's the real? What's the real number? Well, if there are 21 trims of Panamera, I think it's fair to say 60 yes or no options, you know, heated steering wheel, interior aluminum, carbon fiber, yada yada. Honestly, even ignoring many of the two times multipliers, the actual number of Panamera variants comes to, let's see, carry the seven, um, 1.26 quintillion. What? I don't understand. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the new Panamera GTS. And this is the cheapest V8 Porsche Panamera that we could find. Because we want to see if you can get a four seat precision Porsche with lots of practicality for a fifth of the price of a new one. Turns out you can. For a hair under $32,000 Canadian, or just about 25 grand US, you can get a 2010 Panamera 4S. This one is currently on sale at Top Speed Auto Sales here in Toronto, a dealership that specializes in high performance and luxury vehicles. And considering how much car you are getting per dollar, that could make this Porsche the bargain of the century. Or you could sell your mum and buy this. The new Panamera GTS, specced today in one of the 1.2 quintillion variations of new Panamera. And yes, by the way, that number is frighteningly accurate. It costs $175,000 Canadian, with a similar build coming in at 154 grand US. Quicker, prettier, full of tech, and it shares its platform with the new Bentley Flying Spur. So, from the outside, right down to its bones, it should merit every extra dollar. And to celebrate fast four-door Porsches, we've partnered with Omaze to give away the electric cousin of the Panamera, a brand new Porsche Taycan Turbo S and $20,000. We'll talk about it more at the end of the video, but for now, all you need to know is that to win the car, go to omaze.com slash Taycan Turbo to enter. And the best part is, your entries go towards supporting a great cause. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. I'll be honest, this isn't really my bag. If I was gonna buy a Porsche, I would probably buy a 911 or a Cayman, but I know a deal when I see one, because for the price of a base Golf GTI, you can get a 4.8 liter, naturally aspirated V8, 400 horsepower Porsche. That sounds like this. I mean, this one 
one is not exactly new. It's got 130,000 kilometers on it. But honestly, it, it drives very, very well. These cars hold up. I mean, there's some creeks coming down from here. I don't really know what that is. That's a bit annoying. And the steering is, is pulling a little bit to the right. But other than that, this drives weirdly exactly how I pictured in my head. Big punchy V8 torque, good sound, really good suspension, precision chassis for the era. Naturally aspirated is cool, I'll give you that. But jump forward 11 years and $140,000 and you get a powerful twin turbo V8, which is good because these cars are heavy. In fact, this one is almost four and a half thousand pounds. So I'm gonna need that low down torque and it's available to me at 1800 RPM. And we're talking 457 pound feet of it, which doesn't sound like much, but paired with Porsche's all wheel drive system and ridiculous engine tuning and overcompensated launch control. And it absolutely rockets me to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.57 seconds. That's quicker than the claimed time by Porsche and I'm on winter tires. Stick that in your naturally aspirated pipe and smoke it. So yeah, it's quick. And that's because it's turbocharged. Two twin scroll turbochargers actually. And last summer, Thomas tried to explain how Porsche's turbocharged engines fit into their naming system. And he made it sound grotesquely complicated. It's not. Porsches are for smart people. Thomas is not one of them. It's very simple. So this is the GTS. So it's not the top turbo trim, which is actually called the Turbo S now. Um, and oh, there's one extra layer. The S to GTS jump used to be the same engine, but with just a bit more power. In this case, the S to GTS goes from the six cylinder to the V8. Same engine as the Turbo S engine, actually. Um, so, th but the Turbo S is turbocharged. This is also turbocharged. In fact, all Panamera trims now are in some way assisted, whether they're hybrid or turbocharged. The GTS represents the highest uh, turbocharged car, because they all are, of the non-Turbo S trim. It's the top of the non-Turbo S trims, despite being turbocharged. Okay, I start to get it now. Thomas's Panamera generation, there was a turbo, and that was the only one that was turbocharged. Get it? Okay, let's see what happens when you just use a well-designed, naturally aspirated V8, uh, all-wheel drive, and Porsche engineering down and bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> uh. oh, there we go, okay. So the initial launch was a lot more violent than it turns out the power actually is. This is still a very heavy car. Back in the day, Porsche claimed 4.8 seconds. I just did 5.55. I mean, what's, it's like, 0.7 of a second difference. What are you really gonna do with your 0.7 of a second? You could, you could clap, you could blink. What's the difference, really? So back in the day, there was a turbo version, as James very poorly explained earlier. That one had some really crazy electronic sway bars and some different suspension. This doesn't have all of that stuff, but what it does have is just kind of some old-fashioned Porsche goodness. And what I mean by that is the steering is really, really feedbacky, like stuff you can't get nowadays. Turning into the corner, not a really good on center feel, and it's not incredibly precise, but I can feel the front tires. Oh, see, I actually, James disagrees with me, I prioritize this over outright precision in steering. I don't mind if the front end is kind of loosey-goosey, as long as I can feel that it's loosey-goosey. Not that this is, it's actually very well controlled. You can tell that it weighs a lot, I will say that. And while you might have good control over the chassis, transmission you don't really have very good control over because I can put it in manual mode and I can use the stick shift thing down here, but what we do have is paddle shifters that don't really make much sense. They're not really paddle shifters actually. They both go up and down. And after years of using paddle shifters, my brain cannot comprehend this system. <laughs> so I just have to drive it in automatic mode. 
Thankfully, the gears are very long. You're in them for a while, and that means you get to hear more V8. Before I go drive that new Porsche, I have to say that any old Porsche seems to drive very well because from the get-go, as you know, they have prioritized driving. And it shows. It really does. Nowadays, in my opinion, some Porsches have got too good, too good to really enjoy. The limits are too high and the cars are just so technically perfect that there's not really much character to them. This is maybe not the best example of a characterful Porsche, but just because of its age, it's kind of fun to drive. Thomas is probably going on about feel in the steering. He likes to feel things. So do I, but I'd rather feel ridiculous confidence and the accuracy of this steering. And there is actually feel coming through the wheel, is all I need to be able to drive this properly. Okay, so this is a GTS, it's not a Turbo S, as we've already said. So it's not a straight line monster, even though it has that ridiculous launch control. The GTS is the driver's spec, and a driver's car, this is. From the way that the transmission's tuned, to the engine response, to just the turning, I'm again, a heavy car. But this Porsche adaptive air suspension is phenomenal at controlling this body. I mean, I've got it in Sport Plus at the moment. The chassis height drops, the throttle response gets more aggressive, the steering sharpens, it gets louder. Well, I have more control over this than I think any executive big long sport sedan I've ever driven. And I'm including M5s in that, even the AMG GT63, which is, you know, I have to admit, more, a lot more theatrical than this. In fact, the only thing that I can think of that manages confidence and corners like this is something that Porsche makes. It's called the Taycan. I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute with Thomas because it's quite a contentious point for me with this car, but I really only have very positive things to say about the way this thing drives. But as much as the Taycan is a word ringing in my head, that car is obviously missing the sound of a V8. There's something very nice about a Porsche V8. And this one has the added bonus of having the optional rear wheel steering, which means that not only in practice when you change lanes on a highway does it do it without any fuss at all, its turning circle is weirdly good. But the beauty of the Panamera and Porsches generally is that I can switch it down into normal and the car just relaxes. Throttle response calms down, steering loosens up, the noise calms down, it's just calm. It has that kind of Audi S7 vibe, that just ability to relax, not just itself, but the driver in the seat as well. And I feel calm. There isn't really a moment where this car isn't composed. And maybe that's kind of where I fought it because it, for 170 something grand, it never seems to wake me up. As capable as it is, there's nothing, you know, doesn't get my blood going. It never scares me. It looks after me almost too much. Which, if you want a really compliant, confident, fast, carmine red, corner carving, highway conquering Porsche weapon, this is that. And maybe if you're a Panamera owner, you have a second car that provides you with the thrills. All right, we're gonna go talk about how they look, but before we do that, Thomas and I are gonna go swap decades and see how each other's car drives. It's old. Yes. Like, put it this way, they've come a, a long way. Of course they it, have. It, this, like, I'm not as confident in the corners, the onset of the field's gone. There's a lot of creaking going on. Don't talk the about creak? the creaking. Okay. Okay. It, it's good though. No, you know, I really like this thing, seriously. 
And the V8 sings just that little bit more in this. That, yeah. by, by a little bit, you mean a lot. No, but like, surely, honestly. surely, I know there's 130,000, 140,000 yeah. dollars difference here. Surely this is a maintenance nightmare. <laughs> what just happened? Um, don't, yeah, What okay. is that? Is no, that, no, no, is it's that not important. Event? It's not important. No, that was the handle was... to, I wanted to show you the engine. Yeah, okay. so anyway, as I was saying, yeah. surely this is a maintenance nightmare. No, it's, okay. no, it's, the, the, well, so the hood struts hoods, are dead. Yeah, hood what's going on dead. with the hood struts? I don't want to talk about that. Honestly, there's a few minor things. There's like, so a couple coolant leaks that happen, right? Where? There's, there's a Where are the coolant leaks? There's a coolant leak at the front of the engine. There's one at yeah. the back of the engine. At the there's back? 500 bucks. Back yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. do you fix that? You have to remove the engine and transmission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and like, honestly, like, that's pretty much it, though. I mean, there is the, I think it's the camshaft adjuster bolts can shear. Yes. Yeah, and that's like... What does that do? Catastrophic engine failure. Right. Yeah. That looks like a cheap engine, 4.8. No, V8. it's not that big of a deal. It, 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 it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the German way. Which means that there are certain things that they uh -huh. absolutely screwed up when they engineered it. Yeah. And then once you fix them, that's a recall, by the way, that camshaft adjuster thing. Once you fix that, the engine's good forever. Very robust. With an asterisk. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, We're that brings that. me on to the new one. Yeah. Then. This is a really important exercise in how subtle design changes, even over 11 years, is all it takes. Because when I remember when that came out, yeah. it was ridiculed as being such an ugly car. Do you want to know why? Why? Because it's an ugly car. It's not pretty, especially compared to the other luxury stuff at the time. Listen, I will say that when that came out, I thought it was way uglier than it looked to me now. Yeah, I don't we, mind we did it. just spend a week with the M4, so I maybe, yeah. and yeah, since then there's been some ugly cars. But, but I yes. think this has ended up being really pretty. No, it's good. The headlights. I'm, yeah, the awesome. headlights have come such a long way. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. the biggest jump here. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, I mean, this is Carmine Red. This is a three and a half thousand dollar option. It's a wonderful uh, yeah. red. It is very good. I don't, I don't, I don't love this red, weirdly. I, I'm really? I like red cars, but this one doesn't really do it for me as much. Well, maybe you'll take the free guards red if you're being frugal. <laughs> but this is, I mean, you probably can't recognize this car because there's been a facelift. Since when? Since last, for 2021. God's sake, it looks the same as the old one. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't they really haven't done much. No. There, there's some, a few body colored parts. Yeah. And then they did that thing on the rear light where it's one full LED now. Wow. Which is actually very clean. Speaking of the rear, actually. Yes. Well, these both have a party trick. Yes. Because yes. they both do this. They both do this. They, pretty good, this right? This one's better. It's just because it's bigger. Have That's not how it works. Have you ever seen a spoiler split and open like that? No, it's so cool. It's so cool. It's just really, really awesome. It, and it, you know why they did this? This Because it seems very over-engineered. It seems yeah. very Porsche. Yeah. They did it because they were committed to the design of this car. Okay. But also committed to having a certain size spoiler for downforce. So they had to engineer a way for both those variables to be true. <laughs> that is very Porsche, isn't very it? Very Porsche. Very Porsche. Yeah. The, the, the back ends of these cars are fine. This, this new headlight that, or tail light you were talking about is actually quite nice. <laughs> All right, let's go talk about the uh, inside oh, of the old okay. one. Oh, by the way, these both have the doors. This doesn't have soft close, but it has that thing where wherever you put it, it takes an e a second, but it electrically holds it. Oh, it electrically holds it. Yeah, it's actually a really good... That's, it's, you just take that for granted. It's it really sounds good. like something that would break, if I'm being honest, but... Uh, yeah, oh, by the way, so I, forgot, far I forgot to mention, when you Google uh, Panamera spoiler, yeah. it auto-fills with Panamera spoiler failure. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, oh, okay. that doesn't mean okay. it fails, it just no. means people are Googling it. You yeah. know? <laughs> this is for fun, really. It's for fun. Okay, I will say that that one is a, a great progression of this concept, that being a four-seat Porsche with a hatch. Yes. Right? They, 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 they took that concept and they made it good-looking on the outside. So, but before we go there, take a look. What do you think, James? Give me your honest so, opinion. So, having just got out of the... No, the you're wrong. It's great. Oh, were you going to... It's not bad. Listen, I was waiting when you, for you, to when rinse you go it. back in time on Porsches, <laughs> yeah. they don't, the interior doesn't get bad. The one thing that they no. do kind of get you on, though, is that the steering wheels start to age. That's one thing that I think is the only thing that starts to age. I mean, this is now a different colour to the leather. It's got a, a bit yellow. Bit, it's a bit... Really like, a the, bit, the new yeah. steering wheels are wonderful. We'll have a look in a second. But yeah, I think it's yeah. great. The ergonomics of this car and, these, and the Porsche cabins are wonderful. And they just kind of always have been, right? Like, first of all, the materials are very, very nice. We've got these nice, soft leathers. Everything's yeah. stitched nice very well. Nice, creaky steering wheel. Just, I want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, oh, stop, stop trying to creak my steering wheel. Okay, listen. Yeah. This is better than that because... Why? Say it. No. No, it is. It's not. This is, it is buttons yes. that are not piano black. So many buttons. 
But I have so many things to adjust. This is five buttons away from me being able to buy a hotel for this one and three houses for that one, and then I pass go and make 200 bucks. There's too many oh, things going on here. with this stuff? It gives me a headache. Okay, the gauge cluster is wonderful, okay? Uh, yep, yeah, wonderful. Right? Wonderful. Are you, are you I being sarcastic? This. No, I love it. Okay. I no, love I, it, and I love, and again, we'll talk about it in a second, but I love what they've done with the new one. I agree, but I, I, I have to say that in terms of cars that cost this much money, yeah. that are functioning perfectly, as this one is... Currently. Na- Hitch just aside. N- name a better interior that has aged this well. Honestly, like, uh, yeah, I like know. if you replace this with like a brand new Apple CarPlay unit, this would look like a brand new car. It, it, I agree with you. I right? Think it would, yeah. It's br- it aged perfectly. I'm not. Yeah, the color scheme in here is, makes it look a bit older, but I like the tan. I've always liked the tan. In the Porsche but look at even the way these designs. Like this it's matches this. And speaking of which, if you shift over to the back seat here, yeah. this is the, the 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 not the two plus one. It's this just the, the two, two seat, yeah. and you get this beautiful center console for your passengers to hang on for dear life as you drive your Porsche. Away. But the reason, the reason, one of the reasons this is a slightly uglier car because of the way this hunchback's at the top. Yeah. Is because it was supposed to fit the tall CEO of Porsche at the time. Uh, oh. As a result, they yeah. are quite comfortable seats. Yeah. No, no, they really are. There's lots of headrooms, a little head bubble there. Which yeah, nothing about this interior would turn me off from this car. Nothing. Right, right. Apart yeah, the steering wheel. I like the steering wheel. I get over that. I the get paddle over shifters aren't the issue that I have, honestly. Yeah. I feel like this is something that just did not need to be reinvented. All right, let me go show you how amazingly well they've modernized this exact concept. Okay, try not to creak with the seats on the way out then. All right. Oh, soft close. Soft close. Yeah. Feast your eyes on what is a beautiful modern day rendition of the thing we were just saying in. No, you're right. This is absolutely that, but new. Yes. No, it's fin- like the gauge cluster. It's Steering wheels come a long way. I'm so happy they didn't do like what some other manuf- <coughs> BMW has done with their gauge clusters and gone away from just a classic gauge. Like the fact that there's a real tack is you, you perfect. Can, from the outside and from the inside, these yeah. cars both look like they are the same car. Yeah, no, absolutely. This just it literally looks like a modern progression of that car. Like this, this one's pretty optioned out, isn't it? Right? It's got like very the, optioned. It's got the premium package. Yeah, it's, it's got, got yeah. all the climate and stuff. Because in that one, if you and that's pretty optioned out as well too. It is. It has cooled seats in the back and yeah, in the front. Yeah, you, you only it, you only you, have them in the front here. But right? if you don't have that, you get all the buttons that show where the uh, have the things you didn't buy. This is this hasn't got buttons that yeah, shows. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I have, I have a question. Buy, yeah. I have a very important question. Yeah. Does this have cooled seats? No, this has the Alcantara seats, which James, are wonderful. James, does this have cooled seats? No, these are the Alcantara okay, ones. Okay, so there's no cooled seats. I now I, that's a cooled seat button that I can see, that I can't click. I, I can't see it. I, maybe the sun's hitting it differently. James. Me, yeah. James, a, am I able to see the cooled seat button that I didn't option in my capacitive touch panel to taunt me on a hot day? Is it? Is that what they've done? I think. Look how the event opens here. I look how nice cannot that is. believe this. <laughs> that so is it, the it, worst. It's interesting, isn't it? Because they've done away with the blank buttons of the things you didn't buy, and now it actually shows you an icon of the thing. You, and it's not like it's. Oh, it's, it's the like, most Porsche thing ever. It's not like an in-app purchase where you buy it and it lights <laughs> it up. It can light up. No, it's there. I have to ever. forever look at my cooled seat button that I Only can't Only when click. the sun hits And the it. individual, what's this? Only on the summer solstice at, <laughs> at, at a certain time of day, which apparently is now. Oh my God, I don't believe that. Yes. Okay. Whew, that's a point knocked off. Um, but I will say that the rest of it's very nice and the heated seats, they work. Yeah. 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 Um, so. Also very comfortable. I can't get over it, I'm sorry. <laughs> also very comfortable in the back. Um, oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, They're lucky it's such a good interior. It's wonderful. They're lucky it's, it's so wonderful. good because otherwise I'd Even be renting it right now. Even this is still true to the old one. It's still got yep. the wooden. No, it's the wooden good. I want to call that a plank. It's a plank. It's not a plank. A plank though. is not the right it's word. It's from my think. pirate days. What, <laughs> what, what, what would you call that? Just a wooden. Well, um, a, well, a plank. I'd. Uh, it's a plank. It's a plank. So of that one has something. a wooden plank. That, yeah. And then it has the silver surround and the leather. Like it's they have stayed yep. so true to it. And it's this infotainment is really really good. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's fast. Like the 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 black levels are really really crisp. It's got wireless car play, which actually works really well. Yep. No, I, I think that uh, it's not as as ten- sensitive as BMW's no, wireless car no. play. Right. This is really nice. Lots of headroom, and yeah. it's really really important thing with these cars, by the way, for tall people. 
you can sit in a Panamera. Very, yeah, a lot of room. Easily. A lot of room. Yeah. You need to go low. Yep. And, and then, it, so that this brings me on to a, a kind of final question for me, which okay. is, this is really, really good. Yeah. It's 170 something thousand dollars. Oh, wow. That one's 30 grand and it starts to make sense. The problem with this one. Yes. Is that the Taycan exists. That is the big problem. And I've been wrapping my brain, brain around what the differences are that, that this would give you. I mean, yes, there's a V8, but it's not really a singing V8. No, it's not a particularly charismatic engine. The Taycan is yeah. a little bit more cramped inside. I know for taller people, it's not as spacious. This technically is a bigger car. Yeah. This has a higher top speed, but when are you going to use that? I don't know. The Taycan... Makes more sense. Has beaten this out for me. The thing is, is that that's a lifestyle choice at that point. If you're actually in the market for a $170,000 car and you have the ability to do an EV, the Taycan makes sense. Some people don't want to have to deal with it right now. Charging infrastructure is just not quite simple enough to use at this point. So here is your answer currently. But you're right. 10 years from now, this is obsolete. It is because the Taycan is so good. The Taycan is so good. Yeah. Like this doesn't this doesn't have an emotional this doesn't do anything emotionally for me. It's right. really really good. Yeah. Like really good. Yeah, it's perfect basically but it, it, to drive. To me it's as emotional as the Taycan and if the reason you're hanging on to this is for the V8 then that's not good enough reason for me and I would go Taycan. Until then. Yes. 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I could still get a Golf GTI. No. 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 The, the, the hood straight the engine the, the, you heard you did you hear you I heard talking me. about the maintenance? I heard me talking about it. I also am a pretty good at buying old, broken German cars. So that one's not currently broken. It's working perfectly. So that's where I usually start. And then it's just downhill from there on ownership. But that's okay. I like it. It's cool. I like old cars. I'm sorry. But if you're like me and the thought of maintaining an old Panamera turns you on as much as a cold shower, then rest assured the new Panamera is in every way a massive improvement on the old one. Not quite as opulent as an S-Class and not quite as playful as an AMG GT four-door. The Panamera creates its own little niche that balances driving prowess and luxury in a way that quite simply is Porsche. But Porsches, while admittedly are pricey to maintain, are also robust. So if you have the stomach for it, and the desire, there is a whole generation of high-performance luxury German cars like this one that without caretakers like you and I will be lost to the annals of history. Because truthfully, the future, whether you like it or not, is not the Panamera GTS, it's the Taycan. And if you're in the like it camp, then go to omaze.com slash Taycan Turbo to enter for a chance to win the Taycan Turbo S and $20,000. Also, if you enter code Taycan150, you get an extra 150 entries. Not only do your entries give you a chance to win, but they also go towards helping a great cause. In this case, you'll be helping the Gene Co Foundation in their mission to save and transform lives in Africa by focusing on the health and education of those in Nigeria. So go there, donate, and good luck. Thanks for watching.